Tackling the inspection of dark, harsh, and sensitive environments is the specialty of Square Robot, a startup based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Using advanced submersible robotics lowered into a petroleum storage tank, they autonomously inspect these environments for defects in the storage vessel using state-of-the-art sensing technology. By being able to use robotics for this task, they have reduced costs for their customers while improving accuracy. Their design is focused on safety and reliability for these unique environments, providing maximum uptime and allowing inspections to take place when and where humans would have to otherwise wait for the tanks to be empty. Founded in 2016, Square Robot chose SolidWorks and Anovia Works as their go-to design and management solutions. It was critical for them from the start to have the ability to work from anywhere combined with best-in-class design tools. Good morning and welcome to SolidWorks Live. We're really excited to have everybody here today, whether you're joining us on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or live.solidworks.com. Today is probably the most exciting SolidWorks Live we do all year. That's right, it's that time of year where we get to announce and release SolidWorks 2021. We have an action-packed day or morning ahead of us here, and we have a lot of guests. We're going to spend some time going over a lot of technical content, showing you just some of the features coming out new in SolidWorks 2021. Um, so the first thing we wanna point out is the What's New website is now live. So if you wanna learn more about everything that's new this release cycle for SolidWorks 2021, I encourage you, go visit solidworks.com slash what's new. You'll find many more videos there. You'll find out how to uh, uh, join a solid or attend a SolidWorks reseller event. You'll also find more information on upcoming webinars where you can learn more. Today, we have an action-packed agenda. We're going to be talking about some key areas in the launch of SolidWorks 2021 today. First, we're going to start uh, with John Sweeney. We're going to talk about quality and performance. This is a big part of the release of SolidWorks 2021, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be something you'll notice immediately when you install the software. Then we're going to dive into some of those feature videos that everybody loves to see every year. We're going to start. We're kind of going to just start from the bottom and work our way up. We're going to take a look at the user interface. What's new there? Some delighters. Some new part enhancements. Some new things that you'll be able to do in assemblies. Drawings is really cool. We're going to show how we've enhanced the, uh, the detailing mode in drawings. And then we're going to take a look at simulation. Finally, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to uh, end with a live Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout the broadcast, I encourage you post those in the comment section of whatever social media platform that you're joining us on. And we'll have somebody uh, gathering those questions and we'll try to answer as many of those as we can at the end. So to dive in and get started, um, I wanna talk about quality, reliability and performance. And for this, I'm, I'm gonna be joined by John Sweeney this morning. John, welcome, it's great to have you here. Hey, Jeremy, thanks, happy to be here. Yeah, so really exciting release. Uh, I mean, what do you think so far? It's been a long road to get here. Are you pretty excited for SolidWorks 2021 to be released? Absolutely, yeah. It's been a, a long road and a strange year for a lot of us for many reasons. And um, I think we have a great release ahead and, and customers are going to really enjoy it. Great. Well, one of the reason I wanted to have you here is this release, we put a big emphasis on quality and performance this year. Can you talk to that a little bit? I know it's a, I know it's something important we do every year, but this year it's been a, a pretty substantial uh, part of the release, right? It has. Yeah, it's been, um, like you said, we're always focused on, on performance. We're always trying to do something, but this year, uh, the past 12 months, a little bit longer, we've been really focused on the performance aspect and delivering benefit to the customers. Um, and then, you know, you'll see some of the charts I know you have on on the quality, the bug counts and, and our drive to, to fix uh, customer issues. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have uh, I have some slides up here if we could uh, show those. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this. I mean, because this is something customers have really been asking for over the last few releases. Can you uh, talk to the quality and performance here a little bit? I know um, I know you just briefly mentioned that. But when I look at this, it seems like this has been a, a substantial part of the release. Yeah, we, we focused more on it this year. Um, we do surveys every year. There's multiple teams that do surveys, Bruce Holloway and the, and the PD team, as well as, as other avenues. And what we've been hearing from customers is you want us to focus more on the quality and performance aspect um, and less on other stuff. So we've been incrementing it up year after year. And uh, this is the largest year that we've, we're about 60% that pie chart there on quality and performance efforts uh, in the past 12 months. So can you expand on that a little bit about kind of what the quality and performance means? Uh, you had a conversation with me a while back where you talked about how like you, uh, uh, um, how you uh, judge SPRs as they come in. Can you talk to that a little bit about kind of where that focus has been on quality? Sure. Um, I think the next slide shows, you know, what we, you know, every, bugs come in and they have all different kinds of, you know, bug type, you know, maybe it's a, a workflow bug, maybe it's a, a behavior bug where it's not functioning properly. Um, so there's all different levels of bugs and we, we try to categorize things so it helps us prioritize what to work on. Um, and we have other metrics that help us prioritize related to, you know, the number of customer hits on a bug and how critical it is and so forth. So the, what you see here, this graphic, you know, things to the upper right are the most critical bugs, right? The things that would give us the highest priority. Uh, and we've, we've done a good job historically staying on top of those bugs and, and fixing those for customers. Um, but the backlog of the other bugs not in that top quadrant. Uh, has grown over the years, right? So we have a backlog of those bugs. And, and what we're showing here is um, uh, a goal we have. It's a three-year goal and we're half, we're just past halfway through it actually to drive down the bugs that are shown in the circles, what we call severity one and two, three and four. Um, and those are again, you know, medium and high impact bugs, you know, workflow bugs, you know, crashes or any other uh, bug of that type. So drive down the backlog, you know, to 10% of what it was um, when we started. So an aggressive, an aggressive uh, target. It sounds aggressive. And I think the numbers show, uh, you know, you've shared some, um, in, you've shared some feedback with me and some data with me over the past kind of about what this means in terms of like our investment into this. And customers will really gain an immediate benefit from this. One of the things that uh, we see this year is a substantial increase in the number of these bugs that you know you guys have closed. So these aren't necessarily things that have a, uh, a button associated with them or a feature associated with them. This is really just the software responding and acting more how our customers anticipate it will. Is, is that correct? That can you clarify that a little bit? Like, you know, these aren't necessarily features that improve performance or quality. These are just fundamentally making the software work better, correct? True. Yeah, th this what we're showing here is really um, bug related stuff, not not necessarily performance. Um, there are performance bugs, but th this is a, a graph showing the quality related stuff. And I, I looked back at it to see, you know, how we're doing with this with this renewed focus here. And I look back 10 years, we've we've fixed, developers have actually fixed more bugs in the past year than any time in the past 10 years. And you can see the graphic here, we're not showing 10 years, but you know, 25% you know, increase over you know, what you might have felt um, five years ago. That's going to make for an amazing release for everybody using the software. Now, one of the things that um, we also want to talk about is performance. And something we introduced last year was something called enhanced graphics performance. Now, this is something that last year was an optional feature inside of the software that you could enable or disable. Can you tell the viewers at home who maybe don't have SolidWorks 2020 yet or maybe haven't enabled this? kind of what enhanced graphics performance is? Sure, yeah. Um, so we took a multi-year effort to um, 
basically re-architect our entire graphics engine. And that's that's what you would see, you know, in the model screen area, not the UI. It's the it's the part and assembly um, display window. Uh, so we've re-architected that. Uh, we've had a team of people working on this for quite a while. Um, as Jeremy said, we we rolled it out. Actually, we rolled it out as, as beta in the software in 2019. It was available, it's available to everyone in 2020. You can turn it on. And in 2021, um, it is on by default now. And you can see here some of the uh, performance improvements. Um, so we've done a, you know, the graphics team has done a fantastic job. Uh, and and what, you'll, what you will see is a performance improvement. That's the biggest uh, impact that uh, customers will see. Yeah, so if you haven't enabled graphics performance, I highly encourage you to do it. You'll see a lot of places in the software where it's being impacted. New in SolidWorks 2021, we're continuing to augment enhanced graphics performance. Uh, one of the new things that we've seen is uh, better leveraging the GPU for calculating things like silhouette edges. I believe that's uh, one of the new things here as well in hidden lines removed and uh, hidden lines visible mode. So, you know, kind of like what you saw there, we're, con uh, we're continuing to invest in this technology. Uh, I mean, that's the plan moving forward, right, John? It, we're going to continue to invest in this graphics performance technology? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Sid and the graphics team already have a plan. We're, we're starting up on the next major release. Um, and we've been enhancing it since, um, since we released it last year. So in 2021, we've added the occlusion culling um, and we've improved uh, the silhouette edges that you mentioned is done on the GPU. And we've added, uh, we've done the, the re-architecture for drawings as well. So you'll see a, a very large improvement in, uh, in the performance for drawings. Yeah, so occlusion culling is interesting. This uh, was something uh, we, uh, the video we had on screen is actually something we, with a special developer option, we were able to freeze what was being rendered on screen. So it's actually a really intelligent, so not only are we letting the graphics card uh, handle a lot more of the work being done, but we're also being much more intelligent about how we're doing things there. Um, you had also mentioned uh, drawings as well as being an area that we're uh, we're focused on. And new in SolidWorks 2021 is all this great technology is now being uh, handled in the drawings environment as well. So users who are doing large complex drawings, you're sure to see massive uh, graphical performance gains while you're working inside of your drawings. This is just an example, again, of, you know, what it kind of felt like without in, uh, graphics performance enabled and what it looks like with graphics performance enabled. This is really cool stuff, John. I know that uh, somebody, you know, Sid is really the guy responsible for this, but I think you've iterated it. This has been a long-term commitment, and I think our customers are really going to benefit from this uh, for the long haul in what we're investing into this. Yeah, we've got a great team working on it, and and it's been a, a huge focus for us for the past couple of years. And uh, it, it's really nice to see it, you know, hitting the street and uh, you know, on by default is great. And we can we've seen a lot of feedback during beta. Um, and people are feeling it. You're gonna you're gonna feel these performance improvements uh, this year, especially in drawings, since it wasn't even enabled uh, last year. Yeah. So for anybody who is interested in learning more about this, uh, you will want to make sure that you have the the latest gra certified graphics drivers for your certified graphics card enabled. You can go to the SolidWorks support webpage to make sure and check that your graphics card has the the latest graphics driver, I believe OpenGL 4.5 is the like the one requirement that you have to have in your graphics driver to really take advantage of all of this. So, uh, yeah, John, I, this is really exciting I think you stuff. Mentioned, I mean, go ahead. I think you mentioned it already, but it will take advantage of the GPU, um, which is a which is a change compared to several years ago, right? We wouldn't always take full advantage of the GPU. So, you know, the better card you have, the better performance you're going to get. And we are maximizing the GPU, which is a you know critical piece of your machine. Yeah, customers always invest in a really you know a really strong and powerful graphics card. They're definitely going to see big performance increases with this. 
So John, you guys are kind of at the end, you guys are wrapping up your development cycle for SolidWorks 2021. Do you get the rest or, or what's happening now? Or are you like diving right into the next release? Uh, we are diving in. We have our we have our R and D kickoff meeting on Monday for you know what we're planning to do uh, with 2022. So the planning is you know done for the first portion of it, and you know we're we're starting work next week. So exciting! All right, keep going. Well, yeah, I mean it never ends. Well, hopefully we have you here again next year. Uh, when we're looking at SolidWorks 2022 at this time, uh, really excited, really excited for this release. Let's not like worry about what's going to happen a year from now. Let's, uh, let's focus on the great release here, John, I want to thank you for being here. If anybody has any questions for John related to performance, we're going to be doing a live Q and a at the end of this segment. So I encourage you, if you have any questions, post those in the comments down below. And when we get to the end, we're going to be grabbing as many of those questions as we can. John, thanks for joining us today. The next thing I want to do is we want to get in and we want to see some actual uh, picks and clicks features. So to do this, I'm going to bring on Mark Peterson to talk a little bit about the user interface. Mark, welcome to SolidWorks Live. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always good. This is a pretty exciting time of year. Uh, we have the opportunity to show some really cool stuff and tell us, users who are kind of diving into the software for the first time, the user interface is the first thing that they they really experience where they really get to see you know, some major changes that are taking place. Do you have anything cool you're going to be sharing with us today? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's not just users for the first time, but also uh, even advanced users are going to find some of these enhancements uh, really exciting. Um, you know, a lot of these enhancements this year really uh, focus around adjusting the user interface, uh, so you can really focus in on your design and be a lot more productive. So uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, you know, we have a, a part here um, that we want to, uh, you know, create a cut and um, you know pattern that cut around. And so we have a sketch available, but you'll notice here that the sketch color and uh, the part color are very similar. In uh, SolidWorks 2021, we make it easy to find that that particular item to change its color by adding this column of colors here. So it's a nice delighter. We can change that color to something a little bit more contrasty. Um, now, before we get started actually creating this cut, uh, I want to show you one enhancement that's really exciting, which is that you can collapse the command manager. Um, and this is great. I mean, you know, it's just something where it kind of just moves everything to the top of the screen. It gives you a lot more screen real estate. Uh, so you can uh, you know dive into some of these uh, designs, really focus in on what you're trying to do. I absolutely love this, Mark. I have a really large format monitor. I can see myself collapsing the command manager, maybe collapsing the feature manager tree. But you know, unlike going full screen mode, I still have access to that command manager up at the top. This is really, can, Mark. Maybe I can call this stealth mode or something like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely you can call it stealth mode for sure. Um, if we want to get even more stealthy, you know, there's some items here at the top of the screen, our quick access tools um, that we might also want to, you know, just kind of uh, remove from the user interface to reduce some clutter. And so here we can put those in the command manager now, and those are kind of hidden from the screen as well, just sort of minimizing our user interface. Now, like you said, we still have access to all of our tools at the top of the screen, uh, but you know a better, faster way to work is using that S key uh, keyboard shortcut, which most users will be familiar with. New in SolidWorks 2021 is the ability to search for these commands now, rather than having to pick through uh, you know a big list of commands. So we can search through those. We can add our commands like the circular pattern um, to our toolbar. You know we can add you know we can customize our toolbar all over the user interface um, very simply. And so here you can see. I'm ready to work. I've got all my commands uh, right where I need them, right at my fingertips, uh, you know, using that S key keyboard shortcut. That is that is so convenient there. You know, there's so many times where, you know, we're wanting to customize our interface. We're looking for the command that we want to add to the shortcut menu. This makes it so much easier. And for those who don't, re you know, might not know this, you not only have the shortcut menu, but you also have command search in the upper right hand corner. This just really brings that whole I don't need to move my cursor all over the screen. Uh, it's really going to make me focused in on my work. 
Absolutely. And yeah, as as uh, you'll watch me um, perform some of these tasks here, I'm only going to use that keyboard or that S key uh, shortcut toolbar as well as, uh, you know, like a right click menu. So here I'm just going to create that cut pretty quickly, um, you know, through all. And then we'll use, uh, again, our S key keyboard shortcut here to pattern that around that face um, and confirm that. So not only do we not have to go back up to the command manager to grab those tools because we were able to effectively customize our user interface, um, you know, but, you know, I was really able, like you said, to just kind of focus in on my design and get to work and be very productive with that. So, so now I see why you actually hid the command manager with that new option. That's because you're going, you're able to just do so much with the shortcut menu right there. You really didn't even need to access the command manager while you were doing that. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, and one last thing, and I, I really like this, you know, I, I use undo all the time because, you know, I'm not perfect, I make a lot of mistakes when I'm modeling, but, um, you know, something that's really exciting here in SOLIDWORKS 2021 is that if you undo a feature, maybe one too many, uh, you have redo now. So you can just, you know, get those features right back. Uh, you don't have to recreate them and that saves a lot of time. Yeah, I think users will really appreciate that. I know when we introduced like unlimited redo all the way back to when you did the file open, users were really excited about that. But like me, they probably, and I'm going to assume we can use the hotkeys, control Z and control Y here. But I remember you could just undo and you'd accidentally go too far. So now you're saying I can roll that back forward to if I had accidentally done that. That seems like a, a really useful thing for people who get a little zealous with a keyboard. Yeah, and this works for most uh, most commands in the part environment. So you know we have uh, sixty plus commands that this this works on. So you know with all of those en enhancements, um, you know like I said, you know we're really just trying to help uh, new users and advanced users alike customize and adjust their user interface to their liking, so they can just really focus in on their design and be super productive. Very cool. Well, one of the things we mentioned early on in the broadcast is we don't have the time to show every new feature coming in SOLIDWORKS 2021. So when it comes to the user interface, Mark, was there anything you didn't get to show here that you would encourage people to go attend a reseller event to maybe learn a little bit more about? Yeah, I, there's definitely one. This uh, There's this um, mechanism now where when you want to edit a uh, dimension, instead of opening the property manager first, it just opens the modify dialog first. And it sounds like a small thing, but because you do that action and perform that action so many times in a session, uh, you know, even just a couple of seconds here and there really adds up to a lot of time saved. It's a really, really amazing enhancement, something we didn't show today. And there's a, there's a bunch more. So definitely attend those reseller events. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be sharing some links at the end of the broadcast where you guys can learn how to go sign up for a reseller event. They're probably going to be a little bit unique this year. I'm guessing a lot of them will be virtual, but uh, yeah, make sure you go sign up for those to learn about all the new stuff coming in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Mark, I want to thank you for joining us. I think you're going to be joining us uh, in a few minutes to talk about some of the new assembly features. But I'd like to bring on uh, Mark Schneider to talk to us about some of the new stuff that we're doing in parts. Mark Schneider, welcome. Hey, Jeremy. Great to be here. I'm kind of excited to show some new things with uh, with parts. And a little bit later, we'll show some drawings, new drawing capabilities as well. Very cool. So, I mean, parts are kind of this foundational thing that users kind of all their designs start as parts and then they eventually turn into assemblies. But... You know, can you give us a little taste of, you know, what we can see in parts? Because parts is broad, right? It's not just modeling an individual feature here or there. We've actually got some special modes, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit and show a little demos today about sheet metal. We'll, we'll show some new capabilities in weldments. We've got a little UI thing that uh, helps with appearances, which is really kind of cool. And then equations. Uh, equations are, you know, always been very important. But now we can do equations in custom properties and in cut list properties as well. So th that's something that seems to uh, generate a lot of interest with people. Well, this sounds pretty exciting. You had mentioned some, something. You had mentioned something with sheet metal. Why don't you show us what's new for sheet metal in SolidWorks 2021? Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and get started. Uh, 
in the, in the area of a curved edge flange, uh, we've always been able to create curved edge flanges, but those curved edge flanges had to originate from a planar face, like that one of those ones on the right there. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, these curved edge flanges can be created even around the areas like the bend area there. So you can see that the curved edge flange, we get a nice beautiful preview, shows us how that's gonna go. So non-planar uh, curved edges around non-planar faces are, you're gonna be able to create those. All your uh, customization tools are available, your position, your dimensioning dimension control, uh, all that stuff is there. So this is really good. It'll really stiffen this bracket. We know there's going to be some, you know, some stretch in that area, but this is what really customers wanted. Of course, we can flatten this for, you know, send it out to DXF or, uh, you know, uh, send it over to a fabrication. So that, that kind of uh, new curved edge flange, something customers have been asking for for a long time, is really valuable. Yeah, this is going to open up a lot of new design possibilities for our customers, being able to overcome some challenges that maybe they had in the past. Are there any other examples you can think of where the curved edge flange is going to come in handy? Yeah, so that's a, a really good example for uh, when you're trying to stiffen a bracket. In that case there, we're adding a lot of stiffness to that bracket. It, it's also good for things like enclosures or covers. In this case here, we want to protect the electronic equipment on the inside. These are fully editable. We have some curved edge flanges in here. Just change the flange length, change the direction, change the angle. Everything is fully editable, just like any other uh, edge flange that you're used to. And of course, we can flatten this as well. And you're going to get that, that correct flat pattern so that you can go ahead and manufacture this part. Well, this is some really cool stuff, Mark. I, I like the sheet metal environment a lot, but I have to say, early on, you mentioned the weldment environment as well, and I really, really like the weldment environment. What are some of the new things that users can expect in 2021 when it comes to working with weldments? Well, we've got a couple of things I want to show here. So when you're working with weldments, it's common to use multiple uh, weldment profiles. You know, here we have a, a two by two square tube and the rest of them are two by two, two by three rectangular tube. And we've always had this great tool to do your corner trims. In this case here, we have two end butt types where you can see how they trim to each other in the different areas. But we also have a miter trim. But this was always problematic when you were miter trimming two cross sections of different, uh, two, two members of different cross section. Now we have a new option in the property manager that's called a flush miter trim, full flush miter. So you can see what happens when we do that. Think about all the time that was saved when you tried to create these in the past. In the past, if you had that equal angle miter trim that was there, you kind of had to go back and say, okay, I don't want this. I really want it to happen, but I don't want uh, I don't want it to be equal angle. I want it to just make those two tubes flush. So you had to go in and do a little bit of extra work and maybe sketch and cut those two bodies individually. And it was just extra work. Now it's just a, you know, another option in the flush in the uh, minor trim tool. So that's really, really pretty cool there. Yeah, that's a big time saver. You're talking about the workflow you used to have to do there. Not only that, it creates all these other features that you then have to manage. I love how this is all contained right within that right within that mitered feature right there. It's really going to simplify things. Now, Mark, yeah. you had also mentioned the ability to uh, to do some cool stuff with the user interface here. Is that what you said you had said earlier on? Yeah. Yeah, so for this particular part right here, let's say we want to paint it, and we want to paint it a specific color. We can go into the color palette and choose, you know, any variety of colors that we can have. We can have multiple color palettes. We can choose from the spectrum down there and define our color. If we know the RGB colors, we can key those in. But oftentimes, this color is specified by a customer. Here we have the Square Robot webpage. We go on their webpage, read all about their you know, their products and initiatives, but that color right up there is the one that I'm really interested in. So now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we have this new new option here, a little eyedropper there. What that is, is a color picker. What I can do is just go ahead and grab that, drag it onto the color on that web page or any image that you have, and it's gonna go ahead and apply that color. No need to use a third-party program to do that or extract RGB colors. And a couple bodies down here that we want to add some ad additional color to, maybe uh, let them stand out a little bit. We'll make those that orange color from the Square Robot web page. Just using the color picker, we're able to extract that color immediately, 
and just apply that right onto those uh, onto those parts or onto those bodies. So I think that's that's a, a really good time saver. I've used a, a you know a standalone executable program that I got to start up. I got to go click on you know it's a color picker type of program, and I've used that in the past. I got to extract the RGB colors. I have to type those in. Hopefully, I don't make a mistake, and you know it's a big time saver there. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a very common theme we're seeing with a lot of these features, their time savers. And one question about that, Mark, I saw you were able to drag it onto a web page. Uh, does it have to be a web page or can it be anything on my computer? Anything on your computer. It can be your desktop background. It can be an image that, you know, someone may have sent you a Word doc, whatever you, whatever you want. Any image that, you know, you have on your computer, you can go and grab that from. That sounds really good. I know when we do things at SolidWorks, the branding is really important, getting those colors. We have a, a special PDF document. I can just drag those colors and make sure that they match all the time now. Now, one of the things yep. you mentioned early on was something about equations. And I know equations are really important to really intelligent parametric design. What are we doing with equations uh, in 2021, Mark? So what we're doing is we are allowing equations to be used in custom properties and in cut lists. So custom properties are very important. You know, you can capture a whole lot of information about the part and that can be used in title blocks, bills and materials in your PDM and all that kind of information is there. But now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we have the ability to add use equations in here. So what I want to do is I want to just create a cost estimate. So I'm going to use the new equation uh, uh, option type I have access to my global variables, any math functions, any properties that are already defined. In this case here, I have an estimated finished cost uh, that you know, we've, we've determined over the years to, to finish out a, a weldment type of part. And we're gonna multiply that by the mass. So it's just a, a kind of a simple, quick and dirty cost estimation of that part, come up with $428. And uh, you can see that, you know, that that's a big time saver. Customers are, it seems like from the forums and from the beta events and different events that we've done so far, a lot of people are really interested in uh, having these custom properties in their having these equations in their custom properties. In the past, you maybe did some equations and created global variables, and you could use the equations tool inside the property manager and then map that to a custom property. But in reality, it was a bit of a workaround. Yeah, I mean, that this really opens up whole new possibilities. Now, you had mentioned when you started this, you said cut lists as well. So you, we can use these in cut lists sure. also? Sure. We got a weldment here and you can see there's four plates on the four corners of that. I want to know the total length of all those plates together so I can order the proper material. So here we'll just use a total length equation and we'll multiply the quantity of plates times the actual length. So these are just the bounding box length that cal that's calculated from you know the cut list and we come up with a little over 20 uh, inches of that plate that I need to buy. So that's very important that information is there. Uh, right in your uh, equations are right there in your custom property. So you can ca uh, you can capture this information. It can then go on your bill and material for those items as well. So that's that's really powerful there. Save, it's just saving a lot of time of having to do all that extra work, maybe in the bill and material or in your equations in the, in the property manager or in the feature manager over there. Yeah, I recently had the chance to play with this and it's really cool because now that uh, custom properties are so solving for an equated value and you have the number value, I've actually found you can actually also reference custom properties and equations now, like so you can kind of go back and forth with them. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, yeah. Mark, I have to ask, you know, we've kind of mentioned this a few times. We don't we're not, we don't have the time to show everything new in SolidWorks 2021 today. Was there anything else that you maybe worked on on this release that you're really excited about that you want people to go to a reseller event to learn more about? Yeah, we did some things with the structure system tool. Um, if you remember when I did the, the flush miter trim earlier with the weldments, that was something that actually existed in, in the structure system uh, uh, tool. And when you build structure systems, one of the capabilities or one of the benefits of using structure systems, is you can put all different types of weldment profiles in there and it, it, it doesn't really worry about it. And it does that flush miter trim. But, you know, I do like working in structure system for, for, you know, big, large structures and it's very good. 
And now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, there's a new manipulator that allows you to position individual structure members much easier, much easier than it was uh, in the past. So, you know, like you said, take a look, uh, you know, go visit one of your uh, reseller events and make sure that you take a look at that new capability for uh, that new manipulator for structure systems. It, it's really kind of fun to use. All right, Mark. Well, everything you shared with us seemed like it was a big time saver for everybody right now. What I want to do is I think we're going to come back to you in a little bit to talk about drawings. I want to go back to Mark Peterson to talk a little bit about assembly. So we're kind of doing this user interface, parts, assemblies, drawings. Mark uh, Peterson, welcome back. Hey, Jeremy, thanks for uh, welcoming me back to uh, talk about some assembly <laughs> enhancements. Yeah, so I think assemblies are one of these areas that people, you know, at least I do, I feel like that's the the fun part of SolidWorks, building assemblies, getting to kind of see how all your designs come to life. Um, you know, what are some of the new things that users can kind of experience in assemblies in SolidWorks 2021? Yeah, I, I, I love working with assemblies in SolidWorks, but, uh, you know, I have to admit, sometimes there are a few little things here and there that can be frustrating, kind of get in your way and, you know, reduce your productivity and, you know, reduce, um, you know, it, it just, uh, you know, reduces the enjoyment overall. So there's a couple of enhancements we're going to show that uh, kind of get some of these UI elements out of your way, these message boxes and stuff, and just allow you to really dive in and be productive. We're also going to show some uh, some things that help with performance. I mean, we talked a lot about performance today, but there are some specific enhancements that I want to go over that uh, I think there's going to be some uh, some 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 people are really excited about. So let's get started by looking at um, this uh, particular subassembly here. The bottom right hand corner, you see a group of a uh, socketed cap screw and a washer, and we've mated that to the surface of this part. Uh, however, as you can see, it's kind of flipped the wrong way. So we want to flip that around. And naturally, of course, you know, for uh, many of our SolidWorks users out there, you know that we're going to go and flip that mate alignment. And we're going to get this dialog. And a lot of times, you know, it would make sense for us to just kind of click one of these buttons and get it out of our way. Um, you know, it depends on your workflow, but sometimes you want to say no here and kind of manually go and adjust, you know, the, the mates yourself and the errors. Or sometimes you want to say yes and, you know, just allow that um, the SolidWorks to figure it out for you um, by choosing what mates need to be changed. Well, in SolidWorks 2021, we now have an option where we can go in there and we can say, you know, I want this option to always be chosen, whether that's a yes or a no, just uh, just tell SolidWorks always choose that option. And then you never have to see that that ever again, which I, I, I love it anytime we see, um, you know, just this sort of streamlining of workflows and, uh, you know, allowing, you know, just these dialog boxes just sort of get out of our way. So. Now that we have our option set to always, we just right click on our mate and choose flip mate alignment, and then we're ready to go. Mark, I have, I have seen this dialogue box so many times. Like you said, 90% of the time, I just wanna say yes, flip the components. The mate I just created is what I want. This is gonna be a huge time saver. Just, I don't have to click that dialogue box. I don't even have to see that dialogue box anymore. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's there's other defaults that we can set in SOLIDWORKS 2021. So, for example, what we're going to see here is, uh, you know, we want to mate this to the slot. And, of course, you know, in previous versions of SOLIDWORKS, we, we could mate to a slot. That's not a problem. And we could choose where uh, what constraint we wanted, whether we wanted that to be free or centered in slot. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we can choose a default for that. I'll show where that setting is in a second. Notice we also can lock rotation like we would expect to, to be able to do with mates like uh, concentric mate, for example. Um, so let's go here to our settings. Uh, we'll head over to the document properties tab and notice that we can now just choose which of those constraints we want to set as default. And that way, you know, we again, most of the time, you know, depending on your workflow, you just want one of those options. Of course, you can always override it. So it's just a nice thing to be able to put in your document properties. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. I love all these things where I can set it up. This is the way I work most of the time. One of the things you mentioned, that's a document property. So for the users at home, when you install SolidWorks 2021, you may want to update your templates. I always recommend doing this every release anyway. I always go through, go through all the options, make sure everything is set the way I want it when I come out with a new release. This is one of those settings you're going to want to update in the templates. Now, Mark, one of the things I saw there on the screen is you had all this hardware down in the corner, but it was all different sizes. What was going on with that? 
Yeah, and the, so absolutely. So in the bottom left of the screen, you know, we have a, a pattern of uh, some some nuts and some washers here. And, you know, in SolidWorks, you know, when you're assembling, it gives you the flexibility to, um, you know, change uh, one of those instances if you want. So you'll see the one highlighted in pink here is the seed of the pattern. And then we have, um, you know, these, these uh, other component patterns here. And we can, of course, change those. Now, in the component properties, uh, we can choose to use the same uh, configuration as the seed, and you know that can help there. But if, this is only three nuts and washers, so it's really not that big of a deal. But if we had you know tens or hundreds of these, uh, you know we would want a little bit easier way to just sort of set this uh, the same for all components. So now in SolidWorks 2021, uh, you can see here underneath that uh, component pattern, we have the ability to synchronize the configuration of the pattern components to the seed, all with just one click. And, um, you know, once we set that, we can, uh, of course, go back and we'll just verify that you, you won't accidentally undo that by going back to the component property. So as you can see here, uh, those options are now grayed out as you would expect. Now, finally, what we want to show is that if you do change that seed component configuration, it's going to propagate and uh, update the other uh, uh, components in that pattern. Yeah, what I really like what you showed there, Mark, is not only did it synchronize all those components, but it locked them down so that you don't run the risk. You know, you as a designer can add that design intent. I don't ever want any of the pattern components to change to a different configuration. So I think that's great. Um, what about some what about different ways of like uh, sharing and communicating things going on in the design? Mark? Anything related to that, Mark? Yeah, I mean, you know, some of the most powerful uh uh, reasons or some of the most powerful things you can do in SOLIDWORKS revolve around evaluating assemblies, looking at things like, um, you know, the total mass of the assembly um, and that sort of thing. We also want to show here interference detection. And we've had interference detection for a long time. It just shows where components may overlap in 3D space. But new in 2021 is the ability to export this to a spreadsheet and even have the option to um, add thumbnails to that as well. So what we'll see here is once we save that out, uh, we'll just watch as SolidWorks goes and take some screenshots for us and populates a spreadsheet, uh, which we see here. Now, this is, I mean, really, really useful. You can share this digitally, of course, or you can print it out and bring it to a, a conference room and, and work with the rest of your team on it, um, depending on, you know, what uh, method you want to use to communicate. But this allows everybody to, to get together and sort of understand, you know, are these interferences intentional uh, in the case of, let's say, a press fit? Uh, or, you know, is there a component uh, or a design change that needs to be made? And who owns that design change? Yeah, that's great. I especially love that it got such a graphical element to it with the thumbnails. Now, Mark, we talked early on with John Sweeney about performance being a major part of this release. What about performance in assemblies? This is one of the first places where users want to see performance improvements. You know, there's general performance, things like files opening faster, but are we doing anything new in SolidWorks 2021 to help our users with performance? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I want to show you one of my favorite enhancements for assemblies in 2021. And, you know, we've had the ability to open assemblies in lightweight mode, uh, you know, for a while. Um, and, you know, that changes the opening time from maybe minutes to seconds, which is amazing. Uh, but something that was always a little tricky about that is you would, if you wanted to resolve some components, you'd have to right click and choose each component to resolve uh, so you could work on it more effectively. Well, new in SolidWorks 2021 is the ability to just select the component and expand it, and it automatically resolves for you. It just dynamically does it. Uh, it's, it's so effective, and it's, it just makes, it, it makes it me want to open every assembly with lightweight mode because there's no disadvantage to doing it. You get all the benefit of lightweight mode, but when you need to work on a particular dynamically resolves for you. Yeah, I mean, I think that that, you know, users who have experimented with opening things in lightweight, that might been might have been one of those areas where they have been hesitant to use it because they're always having to right click, resolve a component. This just seems like it makes that workflow so natural. Well, that's great in terms of like just general performance. What about tools to like, uh, you know, make that, ex you know, uh, to reduce uh, overhead on my computer or things like that? Are we doing anything there? Yeah, absolutely. So um, with, uh, you know, we've introduced D feature 
in 2019. And, you know, just to briefly go over what Silhouette D feature is, it just allows you to sort of simplify a component that, or a, an assembly, um, you know, into a representation of itself. So that, you know, if you wanted to, you could, let's say, send it to somebody that you're working with, a, a partner, um, and not give away all of your intellectual property, for example. Um, but it can also be used to improve performance of top-level assemblies. So what we're showing here is I have a component that I've simplified, um, but new in 2021 is the ability to save that component as a configuration. Um, because before, we'd have to save it out as a separate file. And, you know, this would make it a little bit difficult um, to implement into the top level assembly. So as we see here, we're going to, you know, head over to that top level assembly and we see, you know, we've got our component um, rotated here underneath. And we just want to replace that with that simplified representation. New in 2021 is the ability to just simply right click, use as defeatured, and it just quickly replaces that. No need to. Uh, do any extra steps or, or, or use a convoluted workflow. It's just as simple as a right click away. Yeah, I love that. And not only is it, uh, can I just right click and change that and that it's a configuration, it's also not a separate file I have to worry about. That could be important if I'm using tools like um, PDM, data management, Novia tools. I, I, I don't have to worry about it, this other file that is this simplified representation. It's just saved in a configuration right there. Yeah, and if, if you do that uh, with several sub-assemblies in your top-level assembly, you're talking about some serious uh, performance benefits there. You know, it's just going to reduce that hardware overhead on your computer um, and allow you to get even more done. So, you know, that that's um, that's it for me as far as uh, assemblies. Again, there, there's a lot more. Um, you know, one of, one of the things that we didn't show, and I really encourage everybody to go check out your reseller events, is there's a, a new way that um, we can kind of dig into circular references. And I know this is a more sort of advanced thing, but, you know, SOLIDWORKS does allow you to make circular references, unlike some other software, you know, and, you know, sometimes you need to do that. But, you know, what, what if you didn't mean to? Well, now we have a capability that allows you to, to figure out those circular references, bring those to the, to the forefront so you can understand them more deeply and get those uh, circular references resolved. So that's a really cool one. Looking forward to seeing, the, uh, seeing those at the uh, reseller events. Well, great, Mark. It's been really good having you here today, sharing us the user interface enhancement and then these assembly enhancements. I want to go back to Mark Schneider. We were just talking about performance. Mark, I want to talk about drawings and I want to talk about performance. What do we, you know? What are we looking at new in SolidWorks 2021 when it comes to drawing performance? So you showed some of the drawing performance graphically earlier, Jeremy. That was it, it's just amazing, and it, it is one of those things that. You got to feel it, you know, you got to feel it, be able to just, you know, move and manipulate that drawing view and uh, pan and zoom, you know, around. It is, it is a feel. But we've also done a lot of things with detailing mode. Now, we introduced detailing mode last year. And, you know, if you want, you want me to, I can show you, you know, some of the cool enhancements that we have for, for detailing mode if you want. Well, let's start, let's recap so, what detailing mode is. So users who haven't used detailing mode kind of can understand what it is. And then why don't we take a look at what we're doing in 2021 with detailing mode? Right, so let's take let's take a look at detailing mode. So what detailing mode does, is it allows you to open up massive drawings in seconds. So here we have a 2400 part assembly, five sheets, six sheets on this drawing, multiple views, you know, and you can see it just opens up in two seconds or so. But detailing mode wow, allows that, you to do detailing Yeah, so it opens up fast. You can manipulate the drawing views. You can change your, uh, you know, you can't change dimensions, but you can, you know, detail and actually move dimensions around, change information about dimensions, change your notes. Sometimes you just want to open up a drawing and actually just get to work. And hey, I got to change a note here. I got to move a dimension there. I got to add some dimensions here that were left off. Uh, you know, those are the types of things that you have. You have access to all the sheets. And look how fast each of those sheets were, were loading. You just flip right through that. And, and one of the key things about detailing mode, Jeremy, that's really cool is that you do not, I can send you my drawing here for you to detail. All I need to do is send you the drawing. I don't need to send the assembly or the multiple assemblies and everything that goes along with it. All you need is the drawing. Because keep in mind what, what you're actually working on when you open something in detailing mode is you're just looking at the line work there. So it's just the line work on the screen and 
it just makes it really fast. And all those benefits, all those graphics performance benefits that uh, you and John talked about earlier, are, you know, they're here in detailing mode as well as resolve mode or lightweight drawings as well. So, so basically what you're saying is that, I don't have to load that whole assembly up. It ba it's opening kind of that last save mode of that drawing with all that line work. Man, that sounds like that's that a is. huge time saver. So show us what's new in uh, in SolidWorks 2021 with this detailing mode. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we were all we, we were able to add notes and edit those notes uh, uh, that it, last year when we introduced this, but now existing notes can be edited too. So I can change this note here, remove some information, key in new values if there was a mistake made, uh, and I'm able to quickly edit those notes. So that's one of them. Uh, broken views, you know, you can see this front view here. It's got some breaks across it, you know, and uh, and also some... Uh, for shortened dimensions there. So these are the breaks that exist in that in that uh, that view there. But the top view, there's no, it hasn't been broken yet. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we can add detail views, break views, crop views, and even an empty view if you just want to do some sketching. This behaves just as you would expect. Remember, we're just cutting the line work on the drawing here. So think of it that way. All we're doing is cutting that line work, and we're able to add that uh, broken view all your tools that are available for your break line styles, your gap size, any of that stuff is available as well uh, with that. And, you know, you can also add crop views and detail views, and we'll show that in a little bit. Yeah, this is great. I, I, I mean, this is really going to change the way people detail their drawings. But fundamentally, right. when I first create the drawing, I still want to do that kind of like I would a normal drawing, right? I set my initial views. Once they're done, I can save it and then just open it up in detail, view, detail mode. That's correct. That's correct. You can't create new views. You can't create section views. Section views still requ require the model to actually cut that cross section. So, you know, if you want to create it, a, a create a brand new view, but a detailed view or a broken view, all we're doing is manipulating the existing view, a crop view. We're manipulating an existing view and detailed view. We're just kind of magnifying an existing view. So all we're doing is leveraging that information to do that. There are, you know, obviously if your assembly went through some change process and you had to make some changes, you're going to want to open it up lightweight or fully resolved so that all those changes are then reflected in each of the individual views. One of the cool things too about detailing mode, Jeremy, is all these edits that I'm making, when I hit save, I save this drawing, you can send it, you can make these changes, send it back to me. Next time I open it fully resolved, all these changes are going to be there. Cool. You had mentioned you had mentioned detail views. Can you show us how you'd make a detail view in uh, de in this detailing mode? Yeah, but first, let me. What well, we can see you see these uh, ordinate dimensions that we have up here. Uh, you can see, okay, we got some ordinate dimensions that were already existing there. If we want to add some additional ones, right on the right click now, we can add existing ordinate dimensions to this this detail view here. So that's kind of cool the way we're adding those uh, new ordinate dimensions. Detail views, if we want to add some information in this uh, lower corner here, it's just a, adding a detail view, very similar to the way you would do it if your drawing was lightweight or fully resolved. The other cool thing, Jeremy, is people want to create hole callouts. Hey, I got this, these holes, I want to make a detail view, hole call out there, no problem. Four shortened dimensions, it knows that, you know, the length of the total length of that line, it knows how to create that four shortened dimension there too. And we got some some other things coming with dimensioning too. I can show you. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I mean, first question I have is, can I edit existing dimensions in detailing mode? You can edit dimensions and change its properties, but you can't like double click that twenty eight and make a dimensional change. Remember, you have the line work on the screen here. That's all you're working with. You don't have the full model behind it like you would inside of SolidWorks. But you can edit those dimensions and make. Uh, uh, you know, property changes. Let's, let's take a look. I'll show you. So, you know, down here we have this dimension 19.13. That's critical for how this thing is defined. Maybe we need to put some tolerances on that. You notice in the property manager, I can change the, you know, the tolerance. I can change its precision. This dimension right here is not dimensioned right. It's dimensioned to the outside of that, uh, of that uh, hole there. Instead of that, we're going to dimension that to the center. Notice that in the property manager, all the, the uh, tabs are available so I can make all those changes that I need, I might need to make. So those are just a couple of things just for detailing mode that we added and extended. And actually, Jeremy, some of these things are been backported into the latest releases of SOLIDWORKS 2020. So if you're using SOLIDWORKS 2020 today, 
uh, make sure you, you know, you, you'll, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of some of these capabilities, some of these editing capabilities in detailing mode as well. I mean, that's great. I mean, that just shows a lot of value in that, you know, in your subscription, you can go download that latest service pack. You can already start to take advantage of some of this stuff. This is going to be great for users. Uh, you know, I've been kind of asking everybody, you, you know, is there anything you didn't get the opportunity to show today that you, uh, you would encourage people to go to a reseller event to learn more about in regards to drawings? Yeah, well, a couple of minor little things you can see over on the left-hand side of this drawing, there's a VDA balloon. So VDA balloons are now supported and those get pushed over into SOLIDWORKS inspection. And that's very important for uh, a lot of the European automotive suppliers there. They needed those VDA balloons. Um, I think that's, that's you know, I know that that got a lot of uh, interest from a lot of people in, in Europe for being able to create those as well. All right, Mark. Well, thanks for sharing all this exciting new drawing stuff with us. I want to dive into the, uh, the you know, something else that's, a, you know, we've kind of looked at this design process. One of the things I think we actually kind of skipped over, and it should have happened before drawing, simulating your designs and understanding kind of how your designs are going to perform in the real world. And to help us understand what's new in, in SolidWorks 2021, I want to welcome Michael Steves, our red Michael, welcome. Hey, Jeremy, thank you. I'm happy to be here. And we're going to talk about SolidWorks simulation and flow simulation. You know, and I got to start off, Jeremy. 2021 was a big release for SolidWorks simulation. It's easier to use, it's faster, and we've improved the accuracy as well. So new users and existing users will find something they, I'm sure they'll enjoy. Well, I'm excited about this, Michael. As you know, as I mentioned, you're kind of our simulation expert. I kind of consider myself a novice to an inter intermediate user. There's all these areas when I'm working inside of SolidWorks simulation where I kind of question what should I do next? Do we have any tools that are going to help somebody like me kind of simplify that process and setting up and performing a simulation? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the, the head there. The whole process is, is simplified from the user interface to the number of things that you have to go through from setting up a study to solving a study. And if you've tried simulation before, you may have run into a couple challenges or you got an error or something. You'll find now with simulation 2021, we've alleviated a lot of those um, stumbling steps. So it, it's much smoother, and this has been done through a number of improvements throughout the software. So, I mean, from, from contacts to geometry issues um, to meshing challenges, we're going to take a look at a number of cases that just, again, the whole process has become more simple, which means that you're going, right, you know, well, as a user, you're going to have more success running simulation. So let's take a look at, at some of this that we have going on here. Um, with our contacts. And we're, we're using uh, that square robot model. Uh, so taking a look at this, we have a, a structure that's going on um, in the corner there uh, where there's a few plates, there's some hardware, and you know, taking a look at the doing a structural analysis of this, we'll just assume that everything's bonded together right away using the global setting. And actually new in 2021, there's some additional properties for gaps and stabilization. And this is, again, kind of a, the default properties here are doing a lot of work for you as the user. Um, you know, overcoming some common challenges that stem from the CAD geometry. So in this case, there are some small gaps between some of these components. So let's compare this to a, another study where we've set those properties to zero to mimic previous versions. And as you can see, you know, the, we've easily been able to overcome by automatically capturing the interactions between those components, even though there are some gaps um, between the CAD geometry that would not have been automatically detected. Now in 2021, they're automatically detected, uh, so you can get good quality results right from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those instances where I've always kind of wondered how I deal with those gaps and things like that. I might not necessarily know all the settings. This feels like for somebody who's kind of first getting into SolidWorks simulation or even somebody who's been using it for a long time and doesn't want to be bothered with that whole setup process, this feels like a big time saver and an aid to help me make sure that I get my simulation set up properly. 
Well, sure enough. And I know there's a lot of questions on, you know, okay, great. It's faster, but is it, you know, do have, how, how accurate is it? And that's where the contact, um, you know, definition, the, how the contact is solved um, between components and those interactions is greatly improved with, with 2021 as well. You know, so if, if you take a look at the image up on screen there, um, we actually have uh, two types of meshes going on at once. We have a draft quality mesh and a high quality mesh going on, and those are interacting. And, you know, in, in 2020, um, you know, we added support for mixing the draft and high quality elements. And one reason why we did that was to, you know, reduce the overhead, you know, and, and kind of optimize our analysis. So we're, we're high quality where we want to be high quality. We can lower the quality where we don't, you know, necessarily need to be um, as accurate to solve the overall assembly. So what that means is you can solve more types of problems um, on your machine and also get a faster, faster result without sacrificing um, a lot of quality, especially in the, the areas of concern. So um, let's take a closer look at some of these, these areas in the model because with 2021, we've added um, additional support for where we have these kind of where, where you know, mesh nodes aren't lining up. Um, there's also been geometry correction uh, that's been added for various types of, of interactions between these components. So we're, we're accurately um, capturing the interactions there. Um, again, not, not really nothing more that you need to do as a, as a user. Um, it's just giving you that improved accuracy. But of course, meshing um, you know, does come into play. So new with 2021, there's a new diagnostic tool to isolate the, these poor quality elements. So it makes it faster than ever before to identify those elements and fix them. There's a built-in mesh helper as well to, to optimize, um, optimize the mesh. And la the last thing I wanna mention here with simulation, Jeremy, is you know, if we take a look at the properties of the study, you'll notice that it's been simplified. Um, because of some of the, the changes to the definition of contacts and interactions, um, that means that we don't necessarily need some of these extra options in the user interface. So, you know, in the case for picking a solver, that's the only one there. Um, the automatic solver, the algorithm there has been optimized based off of the study that you're trying to solve and also the computer that you're using to solve. So it's, it's doing a lot of different balance, a different, you know, multiple balancing act automatically uh, to pick the right solver for you. But if you're an advanced user, yeah, you sure still have uh, those additional solver types available for you. I mean, that seems like it's really going to streamline my workflows, uh, you know, anybody's workflow using SolidWorks simulation. But I love at the end how you mentioned how the automatic solver is going to do a better job understanding what my hardware that I have available to me in combination with this type of study that I've set up. It just sounds like it's going to help me get to my end results a lot faster. Now, one of the things you had mentioned earlier on is you said simulation and flow simulation. Now, flow si simulation is, that, is really exciting. What are we doing new in flow simulation in SolidWorks to, in 2021? Yeah, so I get really excited about this one. Um, with, with 2021, we're actually combining. The, the, the one I want to focus on here is the combination of two uh, types of uh, physics that we've been able to solve um, before, and that is free surface and rotating regions. So we can see some of the results here already. I mean, just being able to have that rotating region and that free surface, it, Fantastic. I mean, think of just the mixing simulations that you can do. So let's take a cl closer look at how this was set up. Um, especially with this thruster, we're interested in calculating the torque and power requirements. And since it's rotating, we do set up a rotating region. And keep in mind the angular velocity that's been defined here, we can set up a dependency so we can kind of ramp up that, that power or that, that speed. Um, also, when we jump into the general settings or the, the wizard uh, for setting up a flow simulation study, you know, we can turn on both free surface and rotating regions. We get into the dependency for the free surface and we can specify the, the fluid fluid or the, the liquid liquid or liquid gas interaction and the, those default values. From there, you know, we set up some goals, we mesh, we solve, and we can start processing the results. And especially with free surface, we're doing a transient analysis. So the transient explorer really makes it easy to visualize these results. 
especially the mixing that's going on on here. But again, what about the power and torque requirements? We can use the, the goals uh, that we created in the study and we can look at the history to, to see kind of how, you know, verify that ramp up. Um, but what was the maximum power requirement? New in 2021, there is a new option there in the summary to show you the maximum value and when it occurred. So it's faster to get results, um, or we can solve more types of studies, and it's faster to um, process your results now with Flow Simulation 2021. Wow, Michael, I'm just floored, especially by that mixing those, you know, doing the rotational uh, calculation along with the transient or with the with the materials there. I got to ask, what can I mix with this? Can I, you know, can I mix up myself an Arnold Palmer or something like that? Yeah, just specify the initial volumes of, you know, lemonade and, and tea. And then uh, we just have to figure out how you're going to mix it. Maybe a blender. <laughs> Sounds like that'll work. Now, Michael, obviously we didn't get to show everything new coming in SolidWorks simulation in 2021. Anything you didn't get to show today that you really wish you had the opportunity to that you'd like people to go attend a reseller event to learn more about? Yeah, especially with, you know, a lot of product development that's going on. There's a lot of electronics, which means, you know, you know, the smart devices, which also means that there's a lot of heat that's being generated. And how are you doing that thermal management? Uh, one other enhancement um, in flow simulation 2021 is being able to do an energy balance um, much easier than before um, using the, the flux plot. And that's something that we introduced in the previous release. It's been enhanced to, with the click of a button, give you a nice um, energy load balance to verify that sure enough, your study has converged to you know see that all the heat that's going in and validate it's properly going through the analysis um, and accurate, giving you an accurate result for your study. That sounds great. I mean, so I want to recap with everybody. We're going to get into a live Q&A here in just a minute. And I kind of want to help everybody like understand where can they go find out all this information. So very early on, uh, one of the websites we encourage you to go check out is go to solidworks.com slash what's new. You can find out all sorts of new information coming in SolidWorks 2021 in this release. There's a lot more there than just features in desktop. But one of the things you'll be able to find out there as well is another URL where you can go find these reseller events happening near you. Now, keep in mind that this year is very unique. You're probably going to find that a lot of these reseller events will be virtual. So this opens up a lot of opportunity. You'll be able to really deep dive and understand what's coming new in SolidWorks 2021. Uh, this release isn't just about SolidWorks desktop, however. There's actually some new upcoming webinars that are going to be highlighting some new things on the 3D Experience platform. November 3rd, we're going to be doing uh, together with Cloud and Collaboration. And this is going to cover what's new for 3D Experience collaboration tools. Then on November 17th, your uh, Michael Steves is actually going to talk about next level validation showing what's coming new in Simulia Works this year. And then finally on December 1st, we're going to be focused on cloud-based design. If you haven't had a chance to check out 3D Creator or 3D Sculptor, this is going to be an awesome opportunity to see several of the releases that have come out over the last few months. What's new in there? And also a look at a brand new role coming out called 3D Sheet Metal Creator as well. So I encourage you, if you go to that website, uh, solidworks.com slash what's new, down near the bottom, you'll be able to sign up for these webinars there. So it's kind of come to that part uh, in the show where we're going to do a live q and I've been kind of hiding the questions as they've been coming in. So these are going to be... Uh, a little bit new to me and it looks like we have quite a lengthy list. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through all these, but uh, I think I'm gonna just start right up here at the top. I'm gonna, you know, Mark Peterson, I'm gonna throw the first question out at you. One of the questions we have is, how do you download the new version of SolidWorks 2021? Oh, right, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, you can always, of course, go to the customer portal. Um, you know, customer portal at solidworks.com and download it from there. But my, my favorite way to download it is uh, just to simply go to your start menu and uh, look under SolidWorks installation manager kind of folder on your start menu. You're going to see a uh, button there that says check for updates. Just click on that. It's going to tell you what the very latest version is uh, that is accessible to you. Just say up, update to that and it'll take care of it. Just follow the prompts. All right. 
Mark Schneider, I've got a question for you. It says, we have a cut list. How can we calculate the stock length in the bill of material? I think you alluded to this a little bit with what you showed. Can you elaborate a little more? Mark Schneider, are you there? Oh, Mark, I think you're muted. Gotcha, gotcha. How, 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 are, we, how are we doing now? Yeah, you're doing you right, right now. Great. Yep. Sorry about that. Uh, so it, it's one of those things that uh, we we did show in the demo. If you wanted to add like an extra quarter inch or an extra bit of material on there, you can use your, your equations. You can even create a, you know, a, a kind of a custom property that says, you know, extra stock length or something and always add a little bit onto that total length. But I think we were able to demonstrate that uh, just by, you know, adding multiple items together for uh, uh, during that little demo where we showed equations in the custom properties. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really exciting part of this release. There's all sorts of new ways we're going to be able to leverage those equations. I have a question, John Sweeney, I'm going to throw out to you. It says, uh, so the 100 FPS result was based on which graphics card? Um, can you provide any feedback as to how graphics cards will affect some of this graphics performance? Sure. Um so we will scale the performance of graphics cards. So if you have a, a low end card, uh, you'll get you you'll get lower results. If you have a high end card, you'll get better results. Um, and again, that I mentioned earlier, that was not always the case in the past. So we'll take full advantage of the card, even if you have a low end card. So you will see performance improvements for low end cards, um, but obviously you'll see more with high. Uh, the demo we showed, I think the question was specifically about the demo. Uh, Sid confirmed it was probably an M6000 or P6000 uh, card, relatively high end. I I can actually get I verify that it was a P5000. That's I actually recorded those uh, side by sides that we had done there. So I I'm running a a little P72 with a, a P5000 graphics card on it. So and uh, SolidWorks runs awesome on this machine. Uh, so this assembly for those who are wondering like kind of for a numbers comparison that sent this assembly from square robot uh it, it's about a 2400 component assembly that we're doing there's a lot of complex geometry in there you saw michael steve's opening up there's a lot of those impellers on there there's a lot of crazy geometry as well so uh definitely having you know this quattro graphics card has been a huge benefit in you know the graphics performance on my machine so um Going through these questions, we have some questions that are kind of coming out that aren't necessarily related to this release. So I'm going to go through here. Um, let's see. All right. Um, I think this is kind of where we're at here. Uh, let's see. Um, John, I have another question for you guys. Have you guys added any system stability where SolidWorks doesn't crash as often? Sure. Yeah. Um, stability is 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 always our top priority. So we're we're always working on the stability aspect, um, and we've done. You know, I would say we've we've ramped that up even more. There's been a, a bigger focus on that as well as the customer bugs that we talked about before. Um, something I would encourage uh, everyone, uh, anyone who does have a crash, please report it to your reseller. Um, because if we can reproduce a crash with your model or with your workflow, then we can fix it. Um, sometimes uh, the problem would be that customers are experiencing crashes and we, you know, we do get reports. We get the, the journaling stuff when you see the crash dialogue, it sends us a call stack. But a lot of times it's we're making guesses at what might have actually caused it. It's not always clear. Um, so, again, if we can get your model and your workflow um, or maybe just the workflow, if it's a generic kind of thing, uh, we can fix it. So, you know, please, if you are seeing crashes, um, contact your reseller and we will take a look at it. All right. Uh, John, I think I'm going to put you on. I think I'm going to put you on the spot here one more time. This is actually from the CT uh, SWUG user group. It says, for those of us working with VMware and NVIDIA Grid, Will the enhanced graphics work well in the virtual world? Uh, yes. Um, so Sid confirms as long as you have the, the correct setup, you need to pass through uh, to a virtual GPU. 
Um, and it has to support OpenGL 4.5 that we talked about earlier. All right. Um, Mark Peterson, I'm going to ask you, we didn't actually get the chance to really cover e-drawings today. There is new stuff coming in e-drawings. It says, is there anything new about e-drawings in 2021? Uh, augmented VR capabilities, headset support, things like that. Is there anything new that you can think of uh, in uh, e-drawing release that they should go to a reseller event to learn more about? Yeah, absolutely. So we've supported um, VR and AR um, for a few releases now. So nothing uh, that I know of that's new specifically for that. But there are a lot of new enhancements for e-drawings, including being able to view uh you know, file and custom properties directly inside the uh, lightweight free e-drawings viewer, uh, as well as some improvements to the measure tool. Um, and something that, you know, I think is becoming more and more used is uh, web HTML. So we now have the ability to measure and move components inside web HTML, which is a, a really um, amazing tool to take advantage of. Uh, you just take your e-drawings, um, you know, and you export it to a format that any modern web browser can read and understand. So it makes it super simple to share that because nobody has to install the uh, the lightweight e-drawings viewer on their computer. They can just simply open it uh, in the web browser. So um, a lot of a lot of really cool enhancements. Definitely check out your uh, reseller event for sure. Yeah, we have another quest. I'm, uh, another question here that's very similar. I'm probably going to throw this one at you as well, uh, Mark Peterson. Uh, the question initially is, are there any updates to SolidWorks Visualize in 2021? And I can guarantee if you go to that website we shared earlier, solidworks.com slash what's new, you will see an amazing presentation by uh, one of our coworkers, Mike Sandy. But Mark Peterson, anything that stands out to you in SolidWorks Visualize that people should go learn more about? Yeah, I saw that um, that video that yeah Sandy put together. It's it's really well done. I really enjoyed uh, checking out some of those new enhancements. So he shows some things in there like uh, capping planes. Uh, you know when you do a section cut, um, as well as like a tune rendering uh, capability, uh, and um, also something that's really amazing is that now it supports um, you know importing SolidWorks configurations, which is a, a huge time saver as far as workflows are concerned. So that's uh, that's. That's big news there. And I, I think a lot of our visualized customers are really going to appreciate that. All right. Um, I'm just kind of going through some of these questions here, seeing if there's anything else. Um, somebody had asked if there were any uh, changes to Speedpack. Unfortunately, Speedpack isn't something that, uh, you know, we've, we've focused so much on just general performance in SolidWorks 2021. Um, so nothing there. Um, somebody asked, what is the release date for SolidWorks 2021? Um, John, I'll let you answer that question. Uh, when can people find SP0? Because pre-release is actually available right now. When can people find, when pe can people get access to um, SP0? Oops, sorry. <laughs> the release date is October. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and answer that. The release date, the scheduled release date for is uh, currently scheduled to be October 5th. So, you can find out, uh, you can go to your, the customer portal on SolidWorks uh, to. Uh, uh, to download SP0 on October 5th. I have another question coming in right now. This will probably be our last question we'll do here. We've kind of run a little long on time. It says, can we mix two fluids in SolidWorks simulation? Uh, Mike, Michael Steves, uh, I think you kind of showed this, but can you elaborate a little bit on mixing fluids and kind of how that works? Because I know that there's a lot of combinations of things that we can do with SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation. Yeah, and this is with SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, to be clear, um, the CFD tool, not the FEA tool. So with the uh, free surface capability, um, which we added a few releases ago, um, supports, yeah, two fluids mixing. So the, the fluids, it could be a liquid-liquid interface 
um, or it could be a you know liquid gas interface. So like air and water, for instance. And I know on our SolidWorks YouTube page, you can go back to like 20, 2018 um, and see some of the free surface capabilities with uh, um, like water or like a boat you know, flowing through water, for instance, to show that that free surface between air and water. But I think now, especially for mixing applications where free surface plays a critical role in the accuracy, this is um, a great improvement for 2021 um, to be able to accurately solve those those mixing those mixing tasks where you actually have you know a, a liquid gas interface uh, that can that can impact the accuracy so we can accurately address that now. That's great. Well, hey, I want to. I think we've kind of really run long on time. This has probably been the longest SolidWorks Live we've ever done. I want to thank all of our guests for joining us here today. This has been a really exciting uh, year for us. We've launched so many new products this year. If you haven't had the chance, go back, check out the SolidWorks Live playlist. Back in July, we announced the uh, uh, 3D Experience SolidWorks. Uh, we're launching SolidWorks Desktop this year, and there's so much more to come. If you want to learn about everything new in SolidWorks 2021, again, go to that uh, website, solidworks.com slash what's new. And as always, we encourage you to go to your local resellers launch event. And you can find those at solidworks.com slash reseller events. We're not done with SolidWorks Live, though. We already have our next event scheduled coming up. I'm going to quick jump through a few things here. On October 23rd, we are going to talk about how you can come and be a part of the SolidWorks community. Uh, we're going to have a special guest who's going to talk about all things SolidWorks community, whether that's socially, um, uh, whether that's being involved in a SolidWorks user group, all the different ways that you can become involved. I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. Uh, whether you're joining us on Facebook, you, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Instagram, um, we hope you guys enjoyed this release of SolidWorks 2021. There's a ton of new stuff in here. As John mentioned early on in the presentation, a huge focus on quality and performance in this release. So you're sure to see a ton more, a ton of new product productivity in SolidWorks 2021. Again, I want to thank this panel. And uh, until next time on October 23rd, I hope everybody uh, stays safe and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Hello, SolidWorks community. SolidWorks 2021 delivers the performance you demanded so you can get work done faster. We have focused on quality and robustness. So your tools are more reliable than ever. And of course, many new features you'll be excited to try. Every year, you face new challenges and uh, rediscover that the old ways of working are just not good enough. Disconnected data, inefficient collaboration. We think there is a better way. Connecting SolidWorks desktop to the cloud. This is 3D Experience Works. You take what you already know and love with SolidWorks and supercharge it with all of the SoSystem best technology on the 3D Experience platform. Connect, collaborate, and tackle more challenges together. Sit back and take in everything new in SolidWorks 2021 and 3D Experience Works. I can't wait to meet you on the platform.
Tackling the inspection of dark, harsh, and sensitive environments is the specialty of Square Robot, a startup based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Using advanced submersible robotics lowered into a petroleum storage tank, they autonomously inspect these environments for defects in the storage vessel using state-of-the-art sensing technology. By being able to use robotics for this task, they have reduced costs for their customers while improving accuracy. Their design is focused on safety and reliability for these unique environments, providing maximum uptime and allowing inspections to take place when and where humans would have to otherwise wait for the tanks to be empty. Founded in 2016, Square Robot chose SolidWorks and Works as their go-to design and management solutions. It was critical for them from the start to have the ability to work from anywhere combined with best-in-class design tools.